I wish she could be happy and find somebody that would make her happy. You know, I wish I could have. For almost a decade, Agneta Falskog was the biggest star in the biggest pop group on earth, ABBA. Sweden's pop perfectionists who topped the charts all over the world and sold almost 400 million records. The unique quality of ABBA was that it's the purest pop that has ever been made. ABBA's was the ultimate glam image, played out by two enviably blissful couples, Anifried and Benny, Bjorn and Agneta the sexiest woman in pop. I'm sure Frieda's long reconciled to this, but you know, Agneta is without a doubt the, the, you know, the icon in ABBA. The first thing Agneta had was sex appeal. She was very sexy, and she didn't know it. She had a great big Swedish butt that was constantly commented in foreign press, and we heard a lot about that in Sweden too. Incredible bum, she's amazing. She's all she was cracked up to be, yeah. She was the beautiful blonde with the perfect bum. But if you thought you knew the truth behind the happy faces and shiny songs, think again. This is the ABBA story that's never been told. The story of Agneta. Since the day Agneta became a mother, I don't think that she enjoyed touring at all. I think she had moments when she thought it was too big, you know, something physically with the whole size of it that frightened her. And you go out and all of a sudden all of her insecurities and uh, these fears that have been built up over the years would show she wasn't happy because the lighting of the restaurant would be too, too bright and people might recognize her or, and then just the opposite would happen, you know, that it would be too dark and she, you know, was afraid she wouldn't get noticed. A beautiful icon for an entire era, she seemed to have it all, but then slipped into an increasingly reclusive nightmare of phobias, near-death experiences, family tragedy, and as we reveal for the first time tonight, a more recent and truly shocking personal relationship. We've, we're forced to leave, but you're from, from off. Can you imagine? Ever since I was a child, I was crazy about her. And now, here she was, sitting on my lap. It was a dream. Today, Agneta lives in isolation on a remote farmhouse on the island of Ekero, shunning public appearances and fueling speculation in the media. Last year, she broke her silence, giving her first TV interview for 17 years, seen here for the first time in Britain. I try to keep it very quiet around me the day it goes. It's not so easy now for the time. But I get stressed easily, and I'm a very nervous person. Agneta is uh, quiet, doesn't want to talk to people. She don't see much people. I think she's been here most of the time after ABBA. She got a big house and lots of horses. Agneta is quite a lonely, lonely woman. The isolation and the withdrawal of Agneta is due to fears. Speculation over the reclusive singer reached fever pitch in 2000, when she unexpectedly resurfaced in court. Agneta was attempting to get a restraining order taken out on a stalker. But in the most shocking twist of all, it emerged this stalker had also become her lover, in a relationship which had lasted for two years. I first heard about uh, Gert about three years ago. I thought it was a nutcase. He was stalking Anita and um, 
he really thought that they would get married. I think he's sick on the inside, really sick. I would love to go back to Sweden, but the situation has to change. I wouldn't want to accidentally bump into Agneta again and be involved in another court case. Gert van der Graaf had been charged with plaguing Agneta by telephone. Following her in public, and bombarding her with over 80 letters, and was found guilty on 10 counts of harassment. The judge said Gert showed signs of mental disability and had him deported back to his native Holland. This is my house. I've decorated it in a Swedish style. It's a small bed. I wouldn't mind a wider one. I always have a picture of her nearby. I always want to be able to see a picture of her. As well as a comprehensive memorabilia collection, Gert also has several letters he says he received from Agneta. These are my letters from Agneta. I'd written her many more than she had written me. They often contain touching thoughts, private thoughts. This is a letter after our holiday together. Our love grows stronger and stronger. Your eyes, your warm hands, your soft embrace, your mouth. Thank you for a wonderful weekend. Den här mannen som förföljde dig är utsatt för honom nu. Jag vet inte om jag kan gå in och prata för mycket om det. Jag tror inte att jag gör det. För Av säkerhetsskäl så kan jag inte göra det. Så vill jag ligga lite lågt där. Är det här någonting som bekymrar dig? Ja, det är det. So how did Pop's one-time golden girl reach such a grim chapter in her bizarre life story? In part two, we trace the roots of those consuming fears and phobias which would lead Agneta into increasing isolation and a dangerously weird affair. It started very tender, but became more passionate. Step by step. I think everyone knows what I mean. I was Agneta's teacher when she was 13 and 14 years old. I gave her the opportunity to sing in front of the class, which inspired her and encouraged us. On April the 5th, 1950, Agneta Foltskog was born in the town of Jönköping. Situated on the shore of Sweden's second largest lake, Jönköping's original claim to fame was its preeminence in the field of safety match manufacture. I've never had such a good student as Agneta in my class, let alone a student who went on to be as successful as she is. A precocious singer, pianist and composer, Agneta didn't hang around. Just 12 months after leaving school, she attended her first recording session in Stockholm. I think that it was the first place I did. Och hur fruktansvärt nervös jag var när jag skulle spela in den. För att jag var ju bara 17 år och det hade aldrig varit uppe i Stockholm så att jag tog med min pappa. Jag skulle hålla handen. Så, så när vi kom dit och jag kommer ihåg att jag gick ner en trappa så här. Så här. Ungefär som jag känner mig nu. 
Ja, så hörde jag att de la på stråkar. Och då hörde jag, gud alltså, det är min låt. Jag fattar inte att det var sant. The teenage Agnetta went on to release a string of self-penned hits, but she was already uncomfortable with her growing fame and battling her natural shyness. The first time I met Agnetta was in the record company. I was quite amazed about her voice. She had a clear, nice voice. I thought she had a good chance to, to survive the business if she could manage to, um, to overcome these, this shyness. She was to travel to promote her solo career. She chose to go by coach, but another on-tour brush with death would force her to withdraw even more. We came up late at night through Sweden. It was cold and rainy and very dark, and the roads were slippery. Suddenly, there was a red light and he put on the brakes. And the whole coach turned around and fell over and Aineta was thrown out of the window. Everybody said it was a miracle that we could survive such a crash. And she didn't dare to drive after that and she didn't uh, uh, want to travel, she doesn't travel, she does never moved, move around. The next year, 1984, Agneta suffered another blow, as Bjorn moved to England and Agneta was left with sole custody of their children. Agneta isolated herself in a farmhouse surrounded by acres of land on an island outside Stockholm. After her divorce from Bjorn, Agneta was constantly in the press, as she had a string of short-lived relationships with a wide cross-section of Swedish society, including an ice hockey player, her bodyguard, and her analyst. In 1987, she started seeing American record producer Bruce Gage. At home, she was just a sweetheart, you know, and was a great cook and a fun person to be with, you know. And you go out, then all of a sudden, all of her insecurities and, and what's the word, uh, Fears, I mean, her, uh, these fears that have been built up over the years would show, you know, she, would, she w wasn't happy because the lighting of the restaurant would be too, too bright and people might recognize her or, and then just the opposite would happen, you know, that it would be too dark and she, you know, was afraid she wouldn't get noticed. I didn't want to be Mr. Falscott. I know that if I had gone there, it would have been her career that I was working on, probably to, exclude anything else because she was jealous of anything else. What is happening with her, I think, is that she does get bored. She's out uh, to get the passion and the spark out of, of the first love. And when that is over, she moves on to somebody else. By the late 80s, Agneta had begun what was to be a 17-year withdrawal from public life. As she appeared less and less frequently in public, the media began to latch on to her obsession with privacy and solitude. Av en bild på en människa så tror man till slut så om mig har det stått till exempel att jag har eh, stängt mig in eller isolerat mig ute på Ekerö, vilket jag inte alls har gjort utan det har man liksom skapat den bilden då att jag har stängt in mig där för att jag inte syns så himla ofta. Och det är ju inte alls så det är. In 1990, Agneta married surgeon Thomas Sonnenfeld. They were divorced within three years. But far worse was to come for Agneta. In 1994, her mother died in a tragic fall from her six-story window. It has more recently been reported as suicide. Her father died just one year later. She was naturally deeply, deeply shaken. It was a horrible time for her. I don't know how she or anybody could stand such a thing. It was too much, really.
I was working long hours and was very tired. And that's when I had a car crash. When I was recovering, I wrote her a letter about what had happened. I heard a knock, knock, knock on the front door. It was her standing at my front door with her friend. I looked Anjeta straight in the eye. It was my boyhood dream come true. Anjeta, hello. Fortunately, because of the letter writing, we knew how to communicate with each other. So I knew exactly what to say. I invited them in for coffee. Her friend was chatting a lot, asking questions and so on. But she might as well have been in the other room. I was just concentrating on Anjeta. Our first kiss was on that first evening. But there was much more to it than that. Yes, Anjeta, she was my first. I've had girlfriends before, but never any sexual relationships. I thought she really enjoyed it. Afterwards, when we were recovering next to each other, we did remark on how it was possible that we had found ourselves in this position. Agneta Faltskog had lived in the spotlight since she was a teenager. But fame had intensified her fears and insecurities, and her private life had been cursed with misfortunes. For a 17-year period after ABBA, the troubled star withdrew from public life. She wants to be left alone. You know, I want to be alone. It's, it's true. And she hides now that she's called the great Agarbo and the mysterious Agneta. She don't want to play the game, because it's a game. Uh, this business is a game. For the first time in 23 years, all four members of ABBA were finally seen together in public at the recent Swedish premiere of Mamma Mia. And Yeta, always missing from the post-ABBA picture, had decided to re-emerge tentatively into the public eye. Men du, det här snacket om garb och allt det där då, det, det gillar du inte heller, förstår jag? Nej, det har ju inte kommit från mig. Utan det är ju återigen någonting som media har skapat då. För att, ja, varför man gör det, det vet jag inte. Men det är väl som ett straff då för att jag inte har visat mig tillräckligt ofta. In 1997, Gert van der Graaf moved from Holland to Sweden to become Agnetas neighbor. Within a year, he had become her lover. The relationship lasted for two years before Anjeta finished with Gert. Two years? That's a long time. And it's a mystery to everybody how she could have uh, stayed with this man. What now act the cause is from I couldn't understand it, not then and not now. I never really understood why we broke up. So I decided, despite all the security around her home, to go up to her house. I rang the doorbell, looked her in the face, and I said that I wanted to talk to her. Without opening the door, she shouted, I want you to leave. Miss Felskog uh, made a report to the police where she um, told us that she was um, 
harassed by Mr. Van der Graaf, and it's, it was um, both by visiting, by sending letters, and by phone calls. Gert continued to phone, send letters, and follow Agneta. In 2000, he was arrested and taken to court, charged with harassment. When Mr. Van de Graaf was arrested, he uh, first was found at home, and uh, two police officers brought him into the police station. Meanwhile, there were other officers searching through the cottage where he had lived. Emerging details of the case sparked a tabloid feeding frenzy. Reports even implied the police had found a bucket of Agneta's feces in Gert's house. It wasn't a toilet with running water. It was a sort of bucket into which he would throw some grains. I certainly wasn't saving Agneta's waste. Nothing in, in the investigation showed that it was Mrs. Felskog's poop. I, I just think he can't keep his home in order. I think that was the biggest problem. I talked to him, why did you do it? And he answered me, because I want to live with Agneta Felskog. I love her. I, I have loved her from I was eight years old, and then I followed her all my life, and I want to live with her. Miss Feldskog might be a very lonely person. She's a shy person. I got the feeling that she didn't know that Mr. Van der Graaf was actually, what I would say, sick. Van der Graaf uh, described uh, their relationship as uh, Romeo and Julia. But uh, in the investigation, Agneta Felskog talk about uh, Dr. Hyde and Mr. Jekyll. Gert was convicted on 10 counts of harassment and deported from Sweden. Two years later, in 2003, the terms of the judgment had expired and Gert returned to Sweden, where he resumed his attempts to contact Agneta. Standing on this um, parking place, when we saw him. So I blocked, the, I blocked the road here and called the police. And uh, I went outside the car, tried to talk to him, and he ran me over. I was back into my car again, and I was chasing him. I blocked Gert's passes, I went out in the car, and I pulled Gert out of the car and I punched him and held him there until the police arrived. After a final court hearing, this time without Agneta, Gert was again deported. Mr. Van den Graaf, he's not allowed to contact Miss Felskog in any way, neither by seeing her letters or phone. If he take any contact with Agneta, then I think he will be sent away for prison. Den här mannen som förföljde dig, är du utsatt för honom nu? Jag vet inte om jag kan gå in och prata för mycket om det. Jag tror inte att jag gör det. För um, av säkerhetsskäl så kan jag inte göra det. Så vill jag ligga lite lågt där. Är det här någonting som bekymrar dig? Ja, det är det. det, är det. Men uh, det är ju så, man har varit med så här länge också så blir man ganska luttrad i olika situationer. Does he kiss? Like I used to kiss you. Does it be the same when she calls your name? My future depends on what happens when my deportation order from Sweden expires and when the ban on contacting.